Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and this week I'll be continuing with the hooded cloak I started last week. Last week I shared how to make a pattern for the cloak, and today I'll show you how I prefer to put it together. Since my cloak is three quarters of a circle and cut in three panels, I'll start by putting the panels together. You'll want to start at the small curve at the narrow top end, which is the neckline. Line the pieces up together with right sides together, and pin the edges together all the way down to the bottom edge of the cape. It's okay if this doesn't line up at the bottom. Actually, if you're using a stretchy material, you should expect that it won't be even when you get to the end. Fabric stretches, and there's not really anything you can do about it. These two pieces line up pretty well, with only about an eighth of an inch difference. But you can have a length difference of up to half an inch when using stretchy fabric. If that happens, don't panic. You didn't do anything wrong, it just means your fabric stretched while cutting or pinning. This won't affect the end result. I pin all three panels together, then I pin the hood together as well. You can see I have the two halves of the hood with right sides of the fabric together. The front straight edge and the bottom straight edge stay open, but the top and back curved edges get pinned together and then sewn. I'm using a cone of serger thread with a stretch needle because it works best for this crushed pan velvet. Otherwise, I'm not doing anything special, just backstitching at the beginning and end of the seam to ensure it doesn't come apart. After the hood, I sew the three cape panels together, again backstitching at the beginning and end of the seams. As always, I wanted to take a second to say thank you to my supporters on Patreon. You've all been so awesome during this whole getting ready to move thing, and your support is what keeps these videos coming. Hopefully, everything will be back to more normal updates soon. By the time this video is up on YouTube, we'll be moving in about a week. If you're making a single layered cloak, you may want to finish these edges with a zigzag or over edge stitch as you complete the seams. My cloak will be lined though, so I won't be doing it. I'll be pressing the seams open instead. Depending on the material you're using, you might want to use an iron for that. But I just finger press, since these are synthetics and they can't tolerate a whole lot of heat. Once these main seams are done, I put the hood and cape together with right sides together. The bottom edge of the hood will get lined up with the neckline of the cloak. When pinning things into a curve, I like to pin both ends first, then put a pin in the middle, and then carefully adjust the rest until it lines up nicely. When you're working with curves, it can take a lot of pins and a lot of patience, so don't rush yourself. If you need to take it off and realign it a few times, do it. You'll be happier with the end result that way. Just like the other seams, I sew this together by backstitching at the beginning to lock the seam. One side of my hood was a little longer than the other, so it doesn't line up very well on the neckline. I go slow to make sure my stitches catch the fabric underneath. I backstitch to finish the seam, and then the outer shell of the cloak is assembled. I clip my threads now.
If you're just making a single layer cloak, you could finish by folding the edges in by one quarter of an inch and hemming them. And then you'd be done. But I'm going to add a lining to mine, so I switch thread to the other color I'll be using and get to sewing. You don't have to use a lining material for this. My goal is actually to make this cloak fully reversible, so I use blue suede for the lining. The lining is assembled exactly the same way as the outer shell. The two hood pieces and three cape pieces get sewn together, and the hood gets sewn onto the cape in exactly the same fashion as how I just did the black exterior. You really can use any material for this. You don't have to use a velvet exterior like mine. Use what you have, or what you want. You could use a patterned cotton, or two colors of velvet, two colors of satin, or you can mix and match any material. My suede isn't stretchy like the crushed pan velvet, and it makes no difference at all. They can still be used together and give a beautiful result. I recommend experimenting using different materials together to find a look you really like. The great thing about making it reversible is that you've got two looks in one garment. So try using that to your advantage. This particular cloak will be deep blue and black, but I want to make more for my other dolls in different shades of brown and gray, red and black, blue and silver, green and brown, white and blue. So many combinations I want to try. After the blue lining is sewn and all the threads are clipped, I'll start pinning the lining and outer shell together. I like to begin at the neckline seam and go around the hood first, because this helps make sure the hood is perfectly aligned. It doesn't matter as much if the bottom edges of the cloak don't align perfectly, because we can adjust the bottom edge later. The two pieces of material go together with the right sides together, and all those raw edges get pinned together. Since the black material is a bit stretchy, I use a pen every inch and a half to two inches to ensure it won't move around or stretch as I'm sewing. This part takes a long time because for a one-third scale doll, a three-quarter circle cloak like this can have a bottom hemline that's nine feet long or more. Seriously, this is a lot of fabric. When I get to the very bottom center of the hem, I leave an opening where it's not pinned together. This won't be sewn shut at first. You can see my hem opening is pretty big, something like 8 to 10 inches wide. This will give me plenty of room to turn the cloak right side out when I'm done sewing the two halves together. I'll start sewing at the edge of this opening, backstitching to make sure it won't pull apart later when I'm turning the cloak right side out. And then I sew all the way around the whole garment, until I get to the double pins that mark the other side of that bottom hem opening. The stretchy material on the underside likes to try to curl under. So I stop now and then to make sure it's staying where it needs to be. If it curls under, it might not get sewn to the top layer, and I don't want any holes in this seam. After the whole cloak is sewn, I reach in through that opening in the bottom hem and pull it all right side out. The hood can be folded into itself at this point. If the material doesn't lay nicely, you can iron it after everything is done to help the two pieces of material cling together. I reach in through the hem opening to turn the corners at the bottom of the cloak's front opening. Make sure these corners are turned as squarely as you can. If you need to clip the material in the corners to make it turn better, you can. 
If you're using non-stretchy material, you can press the seams flat and the cloak will stay neatly folded. But stretchy material doesn't always retain its shape as well without a little extra help. Instead of just closing the bottom opening, I'll top stitch the edges of the whole thing. I also feel like this gives a more polished end result. I fold the edges by hand, aligning it so the black and blue fabric meets perfectly at the edge of the cloak, and I pin the fabric in place. This will let it be fully reversible, with the lining color not showing from either side, no matter which way I flip the cloak. When I get to the bottom edge where the hem is still open, I turn the material in about a quarter of an inch and pin it. I like to do one side and then the other, folding them as they would have been if I had sewn all the way around the whole cloak. This will give me a neat and perfectly finished edge all the way around when I top stitch. If any of your cloak panels don't line up nicely at the bottom, you have the option of either trimming off the extra material before you put the pieces together, or you can just pin them and ignore them. As long as you make sure you're stitching on the fabric, it doesn't really matter if you trim it or not, because all the extra material that doesn't align will be folded to the inside. Before I start top stitching, I thread my machine with two different colors of thread. The bobbin thread on the bottom is blue, and the top thread is black. I'll top stitch the cloak with the black facing up and the blue facing down, so the thread will be the correct color for either side. Then I start sewing, top stitching about 1 8 of an inch from the edge of the fabric. My machine has a guide on the bobbin cover that shows me exactly where I need to keep the material to get that 1 8 inch edge. Then it's just a matter of sewing all the way around the huge cloak. I think I mentioned in my last video that this cloak is for for all, my Feeple 65 Chloe. I took her measurements before I packed her for the move, but she won't be able to show off the cloak until we get to the new house. As I said earlier, we'll be moving the last week of February, and I'm super excited, but it's also been a challenging time. It's been hard for me to make anything while I'm packing all my supplies, and it seems like paperwork and cleaning and packing has taken up a lot of my time. I've put a lot of stuff on the back burner for now as we're moving. I had planned to write a whole new book before spring, but with everything else I have going on, I ended up deciding to put that aside to focus on editing Rune and For All's books as I try to figure out what I'm doing with them. It's been hard work, but I've also enjoyed going back through the story and finding all the things that made me love these characters in the first place. I'm so glad I decided to make them into dolls. It brings me so much happiness to see physical representations of their story. Once we move, I'd like to do more with props and dioramas. I think it would be really cool to try to recreate scenes from the books, especially while I'm still in the process of editing and refining everything, so the visuals are really fresh in my head. Once the whole cloak is top-stitched, I trim the threads. The cloak is now fully constructed and totally reversible. It'll need a good pressing and a lint roller to get the dog hair off, but the last thing to do is add a clasp. You can just add a ribbon at the throat and call it a day if you want, but I like to make it a little more decorative. A hook and eye closure works well for reversible things because it can easily be closed from either side. And then I'll make some little double coin knots to sew over the closure, just to make it pretty. I'm really bad with knot work, so I don't know how well I can show how I do it. But you can find lots of great instructional tutorials if you look up double coin knots or Josephine knots as they're sometimes called. You start with a length of cord and then make two loops that lay against each other like this, making kind of a pretzel shape. Then you bring this top cord underneath and across to weave it through these loops. It goes over the first cord, under the second, over the third, and under the fourth. Once you tighten the loops, you'll have a pretty knot. Or, well, you will if you're better at this than I am. This is about the beginning and end of my knot tying capabilities. Ugh. 
Let's see if I can do it again. Loop, loop, weave it through. Oh, hey, that one turned out better. Cool. Now to just tighten it up. There we go, not bad. There are lots of ways to finish these, but I'm lazy, so I just like to clip the cord with a bit of extra length. Then I use a flame to heat seal the ends of the cord. I fold the ends under and sew them down so they can't be seen. So I'll put on my hook and eye closures and then cover them up with the knots. Wow, that spot is really thick. A thimble would be useful here. I have to decide which way to turn the knot first. Actually, the blue ones are going on the black side, so I'm not even holding the right one. It only takes a few stitches to hold the knot on. Just make sure you have those ends sewn under really well so they don't pop out. I'll sew the blue ones on the black side and the silver ones on the blue side. And now the cloak is finished. I still need to clean and press it, but I think it looks pretty good. It hooks at the throat, right where the knots are, and it can be flipped either direction for two very different colors. Since For All is packed, she can't enjoy it until after we move, so I guess Rune gets to wear it for now. It's kind of funny, he's so beefy compared to Feral that it won't close around his neck. Oh well, he'll have his own cloak soon enough. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.